Welcome to the Dragonfly Energy 201 training, simple upgrades and system overhauls. This training module is geared towards service techs and salespeople who'd like to take a deeper dive into the specifics of how to build out the best and most effective power systems for your customers. We'll give further background into our BMS heated batteries and delve into the options available to you and your customers when upgrading RV power systems. Here's a quick look at a rundown of the training content we'll be covering in this module. Lithium-ion batteries have a lot of advantages over their lead-acid counterparts. They're lighter, more efficient, charge faster, and have a longer lifespan. However, they're susceptible to conditions that can damage the battery pack. Tapping into all of this potential requires lithium-ion batteries to be more complex and include components to help avoid these potentially damaging conditions. In fact, this is the primary purpose of the battery management system, also known as the BMS, and can be looked at as the brain of the battery pack. All Dragonfly Energy batteries come with a state-of-the-art BMS installed in the pack. This BMS is critical to the battery's safe operation, overall performance, and longevity. And more importantly, it protects whatever the lithium battery is installed in, for example, your customer's RV, and the people who are using it. The primary function of the BMS is to protect the battery cells from damage caused by being overcharged or overdischarged. Additionally, the BMS calculates the remaining charge, monitors the battery's temperature, and monitors the battery's health and safety by checking for loose connections and internal shorts. The BMS also balances the charge across the cells to keep each cell functioning at maximum capacity. If it detects any unsafe conditions, the BMS shuts the battery down to protect the lithium ion cells and the user. Our Dragonfly Energy Packs feature one of the best battery management systems in the industry. Designed by us for our batteries, our BMS features multi-tiered output current protection, short circuit protection, temperature protection. It also has the ability to have 100% depth of discharge and the BMS does automatic cell balancing one of the things that the battery management system does to protect your investment in this battery and the user of the battery is control the amount of discharge power that can be sent out of the battery. I call those output current limits. For example, the 100 amp hour pack can do 100 amps continuous, 200 amps for 30 seconds, and a half a second surge for higher loads. The GC3 can do 300 amps continuous, 500 amps for 30 seconds, and a half a second surge for higher loads. Each of our packs features passive cell balancing, which happens at the top of the charge cycle. And what that does is it monitors each module inside the battery to make sure it's topped off evenly at the top of the charge cycle. This is done through bleed resistors on the battery management system. And that's why it's important when charging your battery that you hit 14.2 to 14.6 volts to activate this passive cell balancing mechanism. Each of our battery management systems has a series of auto resets built in. These auto resets are there to signal the user of an out of the ordinary condition on the battery itself. Let's do a quick rundown of how the BMS will reset within our Dragonfly Energy batteries. The first auto reset is the BMS discharge limitation. This is where it's monitoring the output current on the battery. And if you overrun any of the three levels that I covered earlier, it'll automatically reset. The BMS also has a low voltage disconnect. This will automatically reset when a 12 volt charge is applied. The BMS also has a high voltage disconnect and will automatically reset when the high voltage charge is removed. The BMS also has cold temperature charging protection, which automatically disengages the ability to charge the battery below 25 degrees. This will automatically reset itself above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The BMS also has a high temperature disconnect, which actually shuts down charging and discharging above 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the battery is brought below this temperature, it'll automatically start functioning as normal again. Our battery management system also includes short circuit protection. This is the one feature that's not done by auto reset. If our battery detects a short circuit in your power system, it'll shut itself down. You'll have to manually reset the battery by opening the circuit. This can either be done by turning off your battery disconnect switch and turning it back on again, or simply disconnecting the cables from the battery. Keep in mind, if the short circuit still exists in the system, it'll shut down again immediately. From time to time, your customer will actually discharge these batteries 100%, which will engage the low voltage disconnect. It happens. The low voltage disconnect is a feature of our internal battery management system, which as we just mentioned, comes inside of all of our Dragonfly Energy batteries and has lots of other safety features programmed into it to protect your customer's investment and to preserve the life of their battery. 
When fully depleting a Dragonfly energy battery, the BMS detects when the battery voltage falls below 10 volts and will automatically shut the battery off. This prevents any current from leaving the battery to protect it from damage. Many people will think their Dragonfly energy battery is dead, but it's just in low voltage disconnect and not sending out any current at all. When the battery enters low voltage disconnect, it needs to be jumped by another 12 volt source. Most of today's RVs have converters or inverter chargers on board that will automatically make this happen. Your customer will literally experience a very short interruption in time while their batteries wake back up and start charging again. There will be the rare occurrence though, where a customer has a charger on board in a system that you've upgraded that's not compatible enough to wake this battery up. That's because the charger will not see anything below five volts, so it will not send out a charge. In that instance, you will have to instruct your customer on how to jumpstart this battery. And we're gonna cover a few of those options now. The easiest way to get your battery out of low voltage disconnect, if there happens to be an incompatible charger on board, is to simply jump the battery like you would jump a car battery. You apply current to the positive and negative terminal with jumper cables and leave it there for a few minutes while the battery wakes up and starts to receive a charge. There are also a few other products that can be used to wake up your battery. Some of the best choices are a lithium jump start pack or a Victron IP65 charger, which simply just applies 12 volts to your battery. More information on this can be found in the SolarFlex troubleshooting guide or on Key Express. When you start to retrofit other customers' RVs with this new lithium package on your dealer lot, the first thing you want to do is evaluate all the ways that RV collects power. There are three main sources of power in an RV. There's shore power or the generator. There's solar and there's an alternator if it's a motorized RV. Once you identify all the ways power comes into the RV, you can start to evaluate the charging components. And on a basic level, what you want to look for is that make sure that the converter or the inverter charger is set to bulk and absorb at 14.2 to 14.6 volts. The float is set to 13.4 to 13.8 and the equalization mode is either disabled or set to 14.4 if you're unable to shut it off. Let's take a deeper dive into these energy sources that come into an RV. First, shore power or generator. These deliver AC power to the RV, which is then captured by a charging source to charge the battery bank. That can either be done with a converter or an inverter charger. Most converters will charge at a maximum of 13.6 volts during absorption. We want that charge voltage to be between 14.2 and 14.6 for cell balancing. This is done during the absorption and acceptance charge stage. There are new converters that have a switch on board now to change to a lithium mode. If your converter is not compatible for lithium, we recommend replacing it, not only to speed up your charge rate, but to also make sure you hit the proper cell balancing levels. Inverter chargers, like the one featured behind me from Victron here, are programmable to some degree. We want you to set the voltage between 14.2 and 14.6 volts for cell balancing. This is done during the absorption or acceptance charge stage. Also, select a battery type charge profile that best fits the requirements for Dragonfly Energy batteries. And also, keep in mind, your inverter must be sized appropriately per the battery bank. So if you have a 3000 watt inverter, you're going to need at least 300 amp hours of battery power to support that inverter. The second source of energy coming into the RV that we discussed earlier were solar charge controllers. The good news is most solar charge controllers will work just fine with our batteries. There are some that can be programmed for optimization when charging lithium, like the Victron controller behind me. These solar charge controllers also have Bluetooth monitoring capabilities. So you can actually see on the same app that you see your Bluetooth battery monitor on, you can see the solar being collected as well. When it comes to solar arrays, our general recommendation is 200 watts of solar per 100 amp hour battery. If you're looking to increase the rig's boondocking abilities, oversize the array. Alternator charging is very convenient for the customer because they can actually charge their battery bank while on their way to the campsite or any other event they're gonna use that RV at. There are several different ways that alternator charging is accomplished. Commonly, we see a DC to DC charger like this Orion TR Smart from Victron, which is completely programmable and easily charges lithium batteries from an alternator. We also have the lithium BIM, which is the Lithium Battery Isolation Manager from Precision Circuits, has smart software technology inside and is programmed specifically to charge lithium batteries. One of the things that we see more frequently these days is folks that are interested in adding a second alternator to their motorized RV. This allows them to charge a large house battery bank off this second alternator. 
This is accomplished with a wake speed alternator regulator, like this WS500, which is another part of the Dragonfly Energy product family. This device actually has a dip switch inside, specifically programmed to charge Dragonfly Energy batteries. So whether it's inverter profile questions, or how to upgrade an alternator charging system with the wake speed 500, our technical specialists are just a phone call away and happy to help. Everything nowadays is connected. Customers want to be able to monitor everything in their RV, conveniently and remotely. And that's why every RV power system should have a battery monitoring system installed. The most commonly used aftermarket battery monitor is a shunt-based monitoring system. There's a few reasons why this is the most commonly used. First of all, it's easy to install. You can see one right behind me here on the board. This is the shunt. The negative terminals of the system are connected here. It's important that all the negative terminals from the system are connected to one side of the shunt and the other side is connected to the negative terminal of the battery bank. This allows all the traffic of current to and from the battery to be monitored and counted through a coulomb counter, which allows you to see what's actually happening on your battery bank. Installation is very important when dealing with a smart shunt. Remember, all current must be routed through the shunt for the battery monitor to work properly. The image on the screen highlights how to properly install a shunt. Notice that all the negative terminals of the system are connected to one side of the shunt and the other side is connected directly to the negative terminal of the battery bank. This allows all traffic into and out of the battery to flow through the shunt. That way it can monitor that amount of current that's being transferred back and forth. Battery monitors will constantly monitor charge and discharge current and also voltage. From these values, the battery monitor will calculate useful information such as percentage of time remaining and time since the last full charge. Once properly installed, your customers are ready to have valuable monitoring information right at their fingertips using the Victron Connect app. We dove into this in our 101 training, but let's do a quick review of the information available within this app. When you first open the app, you'll notice the state of charge, which shows you the percentage of power remaining in your bank. Below that, you'll see the voltage of your battery bank. And then further down, you'll see the current or the power being consumed from your batteries. And at the very end, you'll see the time remaining in your battery bank. For example, the bank behind me has two days and 17 hours of battery power left on it, which isn't surprising because we aren't running any loads on this battery bank right now. There's another screen on the Victron Connect app that I find really interesting. That's the history screen. It tells you some interesting facts about your battery bank, like your deepest discharge or your last discharge or the amount of amp hours you've pulled out of your battery bank and its entire lifespan of monitoring. There's also other interesting facts on this app basically like what was your lowest battery voltage or the maximum amount of battery voltage you had or the time since your last full recharge, which is important to keep track of so you make sure you're properly balancing your batteries. Before we get to simple upgrades and system overhauls, let's do a quick review of some of the basics around lithium ion batteries. When it comes to power delivery, lead acid batteries have a lot of variables involved. For example, the larger of a load you pull from a lead acid battery, the less actual deliverable power is inside the battery. So if you're pulling a 10 amp load, you'll get more power out of the battery than if you're pulling a 50 amp draw. Lithium batteries have zero resistance inside, and it doesn't matter if you're pulling a 10 amp, a 50 amp, or even a 100 amp draw, you'll still receive the same amount of power out of that battery bank. There is no variation based on, on load size. There are a few things on your customer's RV that use a lot of power. With lithium batteries installed, your customer will be able to run these high load accessories more often than they ever could before with lead acid batteries. For example, you can't even run an air conditioner with lead acid batteries on board, they'll discharge so quickly. But it also is important to educate your customer, letting them know that even though they can run these high load accessories more conveniently with lithium, they will draw down their battery bank faster than just running the lights or the fan. When thinking about voltage versus capacity, there's a number of important things to note. First off, lithium batteries have a very flat discharge curve. So over the discharge cycle, the battery will discharge what I call a plateau, very flat. And then at the very end, it'll drop off a cliff. A lead acid battery discharge curve starts to deplete very rapidly. It doesn't have a plateau. So as soon as you start pulling a load, the curve starts to drop, which increases the internal resistance in the battery, therefore further depleting the amount of power deliverable from that battery. On the screen now, you can see a discharge chart. 
It shows you the relative capacity versus voltage in a Dragonfly Energy battery. This is just another example of how Dragonfly Energy's lithium batteries outperform lead acid batteries every step of the way. The main difference in wiring batteries in series versus parallel is the impact on the output voltage and the capacity of the battery system. Batteries wired in series will have their voltages added together. Batteries wired in parallel will have their capacities measured in amp hours added together. However, the total available energy measured in watt hours in both configurations is exactly the same. For example, wiring two 12 volt batteries with 100 amp hour capacities in series will output 24 volts with a 100 amp hour capacity. Wiring the same two batteries in parallel will output 12 volts with 200 amp hour capacity. Thus, both systems have a total energy of 2400 watt hours. Watt hours equals volts times amp hours. Additionally, batteries wired in series or parallel configurations should have all the same voltage and capacity rating. Mixing and matching voltages and capacities can lead to problems that may damage your batteries. To wire multiple batteries in series, connect the positive terminal of each battery to the negative terminal of the next battery. Then measure the system's total output voltage between the negative terminal of the first battery and the positive terminal of the last battery in the series. Let's take a look at two examples to make this clear. The first example is two 100 amp hour batteries wired in series. As you can see, the positive terminal on the first battery is connected to the negative terminal on the second. Thus, the total system voltage is 24 volts and the total capacity is 100 amp hours. The second example is wired the same way, but with a third battery, and the voltages of all three batteries add together, resulting in a system voltage of 36 volts, but the capacity remains at 100 amp hours. How many batteries can you wire in series? Dragonfly Energy allows up to four of their lithium batteries to be wired in series to create a 48 volt system. You can continue to expand your battery bank from there within your system's voltages, 12, 24, 36, or 48 volts. To wire multiple batteries in parallel, connect all the positive terminals together and all the negative terminals together. Since all of the positive and negative terminals are connected, you can measure the system output voltage across any two positive and negative terminals. Let's take a look at two examples to make this clear. The first example is two 100 amp hour batteries wired in parallel. The positive terminal on the first battery is connected to the positive terminal on the second battery. Likewise, the negative terminals of each batteries are also connected. The total system voltage is 12 volts and the total capacity is 200 amp hours. The second example is wired the same way, but with a third battery. The capacities of all three batteries add together, resulting in a total of 300 amp hours at 12 volts. There is no limit to how many Dragonfly Energy batteries you can wire in parallel. The more batteries you add in parallel, the more capacity and longer runtime you'll have available. What type of system does your customer want? Let's get into upgrading your customer's system. The first question is to answer whether your customer is looking for a simple upgrade or a system overhaul. A simple upgrade is when a customer has two lead acid batteries and wants to replace them with lithium iron phosphate, but does not have the need to run higher wattage 120 volt items in their RV. A system overhaul is when your customer wants to be able to run specific electronics or appliances in their RV, which will require a larger inverter or installing an inverter charger. In this case, we'd be looking to power the entire distribution panel with an inverter charger. When speaking to simple upgrades, the easiest way to classify it is by what it includes. For our purposes, we would say a simple upgrade uses existing wiring, for the most part, and it uses an existing battery location. Simple upgrades that can be made available to your customers right at the dealership include batteries, a converter, a battery monitor, or even a solar system. Here's a couple of examples of upgrades you can offer your customers on specific rigs. A travel trailer. You can install two or more 100 amp hour Dragonfly Energy Lithium batteries. You could replace the converter to a lithium compatible converter. You can install a battery monitoring system. And you can upgrade their system with solar panels and a solar charge controller. A Class B motorhome. You can install two or more 100 amp hour Dragonfly Energy Lithium batteries. You can replace the converter with the lithium compatible converter. You can install a battery monitoring system. And you can even install a DC to DC charger. 
as well as solar panels and a solar charge controller. How big of a battery bank should you recommend for your customer? And what components need to be replaced or upgraded? Let's look at this flowchart that should add some clarity to this process. This flowchart highlights a simple system upgrade, including shore charging, solar charging, battery monitoring, and even alternator charging. Now that we have a good idea of what components will be replaced or installed, let's take a look at the sizing of the battery bank. If you're replacing two 100 amp hour lead acid batteries, installing one 12 volt 100 amp hour Dragonfly Energy battery will provide the same usable capacity. Simple installations typically are not about running a specific electronic item. Rather, your customer wants the benefits of lithium iron phosphate and a longer runtime than they currently have. If your customer has an inverter, there'll be a minimum power capacity requirement. For example, a 1000 watt inverter will require at least 100 amp hours of battery power, a 2000 watt at least 200 amp hours of battery, and a 3000 watt at least 300 amp hours of battery power. If your house battery bank is used to start a generator, you'll need a minimum of 200 amp hours. For a more exact number of batteries for the system, you'll want to determine what you want to power and for how long. So your first question will be whether you are going to want to invert the air conditioning. That's our biggest power draw. So the answer will take us down the appropriate track to figure out the best plan of attack for this system. This will be a great time to pick up the phone and call one of our specialists. We can walk you through this process. Now, if we're doing a system overhaul, things are gonna get a bit more complicated. A system overhaul typically requires a new circuit from the batteries to an inverter charger and may require relocating the battery bank. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of what a system overhaul can look like for your customers. On a travel trailer, you can install 200 amp hours or more of Dragonfly Energy lithium batteries. You can disable the existing converter and install one or two inverter chargers. You can install a battery monitoring system. You can install bus bars for easy connection. And you can install a larger solar charge controller to support the appropriate size solar array. In a motorhome, you can install 200 amp hours or more of Dragonfly Energy lithium batteries. You can disable the existing converter. You can install multiple inverter chargers. You can install a battery monitoring system. You can even install bus bars for easy connection. You can install a larger solar charge controller to support the appropriately sized solar array. And additionally, you can install an alternator charging system, which could include a DC to DC charger or a lithium BIM. Here's a few more things to keep in mind with the system overhaul. If the customer wants to be able to run an air conditioner for any amount of time, the minimum requirement is to have at least a three KVA inverter with 300 amp hours of battery power. Outside of this minimum requirement, it comes down to runtime. Each 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery will provide 1200 watt hours of energy storage. When evaluating the air conditioner, make sure it includes a soft start. If not, you'll want to install one. This soft start dramatically decreases the workload on the inverter charger while decreasing the locked rotor amp startup on the air conditioner by over 50%. When sizing the inverter for your system, please keep in mind a 1000 watt inverter requires at least 100 amp hours of battery power. A 2000 watt inverter requires at least 200 amp hours of battery power and a 3000 watt inverter requires at least 300 amp hours of battery power. Let's break down an example of a customer request. This customer wants to run a 1200 watt air conditioner for five hours continuous. Typically, inverters always lose about 10% of their power during the power inversion process. So we've considered that in our math here. Our starting amount of power needed is 1200 watts for five hours, which equals 6,000 watt hours of power. Take the 6,000 watt hours and multiply it by 1.1 to include the extra 10%. We end up with 6,600 watt hours required to run our air conditioner for five hours without any charging. 600 amp hours times 12 volts equals 7,200 watt hours. So we'd recommend at least 600 amp hours of Dragonfly Energy lithium batteries for this customer. A system overhaul is usually geared towards powering the entire distribution panel. 
The wattage of the inverter charger is dependent on the appliances that the customer wants to run. The inverter is sized based on the maximum amount of 120 volt power that's available at any given time. Common appliances that affect inverter size include a microwave, an eight cup coffee pot, even a standard toaster. All of these items require at least a 2000 watt inverter. When you look at an induction cooktop or even an air conditioner with a soft start, both of these items require at least a 3000 watt inverter. Two air conditioners with soft starts will require two 3000 watt inverters. Keep in mind, you can typically only run one high wattage appliance at a time. If the customer wants to run more than one, you may need a larger inverter charger or even two inverter chargers. Once we have determined the correct inverter charger size needed for our system, it's important to choose the correct inverter charger for that system. If you're looking at a system with a 30 amp service, which has a single 120 volt line, the Multi Plus 2000 or Multi Plus 3000 are your best options. If you're looking at a 50 amp service, your choices get a little more complicated. You can use the Multi Plus 2 3000, which has two 120 volt legs, or alternatively, you can put one Multi Plus 3000 on each leg of that system to energ energize the full 25 amps on each leg. Beyond your power system, it's incredibly important to ensure you have sized your solar array appropriately and are using a compatible solar charge controller. When sizing a solar array, the general recommendation is to have at least 200 watts of solar for 100 amp hours of battery power. If the customer plans on boondocking for extended amounts of time, we'd advise that you fill the roof with as many solar panels as can fit of a maximum 700 watts per 100 amp hours of battery power. If the customer wants to be able to run an air conditioner all day when the sun is out, you'll need to be collecting more power from the solar than you're consuming. That means your solar array will have to be 1200 watts or more. Now that we've gotten through the more complex parts of system design, let's tackle an easy but important piece of the puzzle, cable sizing. We developed a simple chart to help you determine the appropriate cable size for your customer's system. On this table, I have several different examples of cable size. This one in particular is a four gauge cable. We also have one aught, and we have two aught cable. Each one of these cable sizes is capable of handling a different amount of amps. And it's important that your system is sized properly throughout. If you don't have the right size cable, you can actually limit the efficiency of the system and you can actually cause heat to damage one of these cables. It will actually melt the terminal if the cable is not sized properly for the load. Before we wrap up our 201 intermediate training, we'd like to take a few minutes to do a deeper dive into our heated battery solution and why lithium is a superior choice over lead acid in any operating temperature, including cold temps, no matter what myths you may have heard. For many years now, I've, I've heard lead acid battery manufacturers saying that lithium doesn't work well in cold temperatures and it can't be charged in cold temperatures. That's true, actually. Lithium batteries do need cold temperature protection. Otherwise, you'll significantly shorten the lifespan of that battery. What they don't tell you is lithium batteries outperform lead acid batteries at any temperature starting from room temperature all the way down to below freezing. The thing is, once you start to cool down a lead acid battery, that's right, it doesn't have cold temperature protection, it doesn't have a BMS at all. Once you start to cool down that battery, the internal resistance increases dramatically. Basically what I'm saying is, you could charge that battery for 10 hours and still only put five minutes of power into it. With a lithium battery, it'll stop you from charging in cold temperatures, at least our Dragonfly Energy battery has cold temperature charging protection built in. It'll stop you from charging in cold temperatures. But with our heat solution, it allows you to warm the battery up. The one thing that lead acid battery companies don't tell you is, you can't charge their battery at cold temperatures, or actually you can charge it, but it doesn't hold any power. And it doesn't deliver any power. I mean, below 40 degrees, their battery performs very poorly. Here's a chart from our Lead is Dead white paper. This shows you how lithium ion batteries, like the ones we make here at Dragonfly Energy, outperform lead acid battery in any temperature range, including cold temps. It's possible to discharge this Dragonfly Energy lithium pack between 135 degrees Fahrenheit and negative four Fahrenheit. 
When considering storing your lithium battery in a cold temperature environment, we can highlight another point where lithium batteries outperform lead acid. Due to their low self-discharge rate, lithium batteries perform much better when sitting in storage in cold temperature than a lead acid battery, which has a typically a higher, a much higher self-discharge rate. So in cold temps, that battery ends up empty faster than a lithium battery. The batteries that Dragonfly Energy supplies Keystone RV have a built-in heat solution. This heat solution is turned on by this heat enable screw on the top of the battery here. What happens is the customer has a switch in the RV. They can turn it on, that enables the heat solution, which then operates, once the battery goes below 35 degrees, the heat solution turns on and it kicks back off again once the battery is above 45 degrees. It keeps it outside the range where it can shut down from cold temperature charging protection. The battery uses its own power to power the heating system, which uses about two to two and a half amps to bring the battery back up to the heat level where it can be charged. So there's multiple ways to operate our heat solution. First, which is the way that I prefer, is to wire an open and closed switch to the heat enabled terminals on this battery. That switch on the other side is connected to a 12 volt source. Once you enable that switch, you enable this battery to operate within the heating range. It doesn't mean it's gonna turn on right away. It will only turn on when the battery, the internal temperature of the battery is below 35 degrees, and then it kicks back off at 45 degrees. It basically happens on an automatic cycle. You can also wire these batteries for a customer that does a lot of cold weather camping. You can wire these batteries with the heat enable directly to the battery itself without a switch, so it's always on. But keep in mind, just because the heat enable is on doesn't mean the heat solution is on. It still has to reach those temperature bands below 35 degrees to kick on and then above 45 to kick off. And remember, the Dragonfly Energy Team is always here to help you support your customer. As you navigate these conversations about a heated battery solution, feel free to pick up the phone and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for watching Dragonfly Energy's 201 Intermediate Training, simple upgrades and system overhauls. Be sure to complete our Dragonfly Energy Certified Program Quiz, and you'll receive a free luggage tag and a sticker and a hat.